नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कंसीडर फॉलोइंग इंफॉर्मेशन रिटर्न फ्रॉम द सिक्योरिटी एक्स इज गिवन एंड रिटर्न ऑन द मार्केट पोर्टफोलियो इज गिवन ईयर 2017 टू 2020 Securities return is given and market return is given. You are required to answer the following questions. First, calculate <clears throat> expected return based on CAPM from security X. That is RJ or expected return based on the risk or required rate of return. So the question can be asked in any form. If risk free rate of return is two percentage, then second, third, and fourth questions have been given to us that we are going to see later on. But the first question is that say using CAPM, we are required to make the computation of the required rate of return from the security. So let us see that say how to make the calculation of answer. Everybody is requested to pay attention. Let me explain you calculation of Required rate of return as per CAPM. Let us understand and say how to make the computation of the required rate of return as per CAPM. Understand it carefully, all of you. Let us say how we are required to make the calculation. First of all. Step number one: Calculation of beta of security. That is the first step that we are required to adopt. Friends, it is the same data that we already have used for making calculation of the beta of the security, and the beta of the security is one point zero three five seven. Let me explain you further. Don't write anything. So beta of the security is one point zero three five seven. Step number two. Calculation of return on market portfolio and risk-free rate of return. Dear students, over here, risk-free rate of return is given to us in the question directly two percentage. Otherwise, there may be some other way by which RF is required to be found. As far as the return on the market portfolio is concerned, that we already have computed in the process of making calculation of the beta of the security. You can see that over here, we already have made the calculation of M bar, and the return on the market portfolio is twelve percentage. So we understand that say the M bar that is the return on the market portfolio is twelve percentage. That is what say we compute. So these are the simple two steps that say we are required to follow. Then answer of the question was step number three. Calculation of required rate of return. Now, as per CAPM, what is the rate at which the investor requires return from the security is calculated like this: RF, that is the risk-free rate of return, plus additional return from the security. What is the additional return required from the security? It is calculated as beta into R M minus R F. What is logic of the same? I just explained that to you in two minutes of time. The risk free rate of return is two. Beta is one point zero three five seven. Return on the market portfolio is twelve. The risk free rate of return is two. So two plus one point zero three five seven. Into ten. So two plus. Ten point three five seven. That comes to twelve point three five seven. This is the way the required rate of return is calculated. Now let us have understanding of the explanation which a CAPM gives for this formula. 
CAPM says that definitely an investor would be expecting a return from a security equal to risk-free rate of return. At the same time, investor would be expecting say some additional return from the security. What is the additional return? For that, say they have provided. So this is the additional return required from the security. Understand it carefully how they have made the computation of the additional return. Okay. See the additional return is calculated like this. Additional risk. And additional return. Whenever an investor is making investment in the market portfolio, instead of risk free rate of return, instead of risk free security, what is the additional risk that he has? It is beta of the market portfolio minus beta of the risk free security. In a way, that's the market return is taken as a base for the purpose of making calculation of this additional return. As an investor, when you invest, in the market portfolio, then in that case, risk of your investment is 1. In comparison to risk-free security, it is more than 1. Okay, Comparatively, the risk increases by 1 unit. And for that, what is the additional return that you get? It is equal to the difference of RM and RF. You get a return of 12% instead of 2%. Means by taking additional risk of 1 unit, you get additional return of 10 percentage. Now, if I tell you invest in this security, then in that case, beta for the security X minus beta of risk free security. What is the beta of the security X? It is 1.0357 minus beta of risk free security is 0. So the additional risk is 1.0357. For this additional risk, this is the additional return that you require. So now, taking into account so this explanation, we can say something like this. 1.0357 into 10. 1.0357 into 10. Divided by 1. Divided by 1 does not make a sense. So we can rewrite it like this 1.0357 into 12 minus 2. How this 10 is calculated? It is found as 12 minus 2. Okay. Now we understand that say this 1.0357 is nothing else but it is beta. 12 is nothing else but it is a return on the market portfolio. 2 is nothing else but it is a risk free rate of return. This is the way the additional return is required from the security over the risk free security. This is the way the required rate of return is calculated from the security. I request you to write the answer for the question uh, using the step number 1 to step number 3. Now second part of the question. Based on CAPM, Advise whether Mr. A should purchase X security. That is a question. So basically in the second part of the question, we are required to take a decision. That says, should we buy the security or not? I want you to tell me the answer. That says, the second part of the question, should we buy the security or not? Let us understand that say, how to make the calculation of answer for this. Dear students, in our calculation of the beta of the security, you can see that say we already have made the calculation of x bar, that is 4 percentage. So in second part of the question, what you can do, in second part of the question, for the purpose of decision making, whether to buy the security or not, you can make the calculation of alpha. Calculation of Alpha of investment. As far as alpha is concerned, it is calculated as x power minus rj. 
This is the way we can make the calculation. What is x bar? x bar is 4 percentage. And what is rj? rj means what we understand is the required rate of return. Which we already have found above. It is 12.357. So difference of both of them is negative 8.357. So we understand that say the alpha of the security is positive. I am sorry, alpha of the security is negative. So do not buy the security. Logically speaking, taking into account the past experience, we are expecting that the security is going to give a return of 4 percentage. However, we require the return of 12.357. The rate at which we are getting the return is lower in comparison to the rate at which we should get a return taking into account the risk of the investment. We should get at least a return of 12.357 considering the risk of the investment. In comparison to that, we are getting the return of only 4%. That is the reason say, we should not buy the security. So we can take the decision like this. Decision is S alpha is less than zero. Comma investment should not be made in security x. This is what we understand. This is what say one of the note that say we already have written say earlier decision making based on CAPM in order to decide whether to buy or hold a security we need to find alpha of the security. Alpha is x bar minus required rate of return. And that is x bar will be calculated either taking into account the past performance or taking into account the future prospective that is say the performance and the required rate of return can be found as rf plus beta into rf minus rf so x bar is the anticipated rate of return and rr is the required rate of return for the security x bar is calculated either by using the past performance of the or using the future anticipated return of the security rr required rate of return is found based on the risk of the security, measured in form of beta of the security. Generally required rate of return is more than so the risk free rate of return. This is what so the note that we already have written. Third question, based on CAPM, advise Mr. B whether Mr. B should continue to hold security X. I want you to write answer in the chat box. So answer of the question is again no. Why? Because alpha is negative. So please add an answer. S alpha is less than zero comma do not hold security. Put stop. Seal security. Fourth question is plot above values on a graph paper. So let us see that say how to draw a diagram over here. Friends, in the diagram on the x-axis, we will have the beta of the security. So here it is beta. And on y-axis, we will be having, so the return. When beta of the security is 0, at that point of time, the return that say you are able to get is equal to Rf. When the beta increases, 
with that the return also increases so it goes like this if at all the beta of the security is 1 then in that case it is equal to the beta of market portfolio in that case the required rate of return will be equal to Rn so we have a situation like this when beta of the portfolio is 1 at that time the return is equal to return on the market portfolio that is 12 percent in this example if at all the beta is more that is what say we have over here 1.0357 in that case the required rate of return is still more So it is 1.0357. Then in that case, the rate of return is 12.357. And this line is given a name as security market line. SML. It is security market line. This is the way, say we have a kind of uh, diagram. So summary of this very important question. In the first part of the question, we are required to make the computation of the required rate of return. In order to compute the same, we require the information for beta, we require the information of RM and RF. Then we apply this formula. We have understood the logic of the formula also that the investor requires a return at least equal to the RF and then additional return is required so that say the, uh, he is able to get the compensation for risk. This is the way we make the computation. In order to take a decision for the second part of the question, we will compute the alpha. Since alpha is positive, so we should buy the, sorry, negative, we should not buy the security. We have understood the logic that say, this is what say, we are expecting to earn and this is what say, we should earn considering the risk. Third question is same as the second one. Should we continue to hold? No, you should sell the investment. And the last screen, so we are required to show everything on a diagram. On x-axis, we take independent factor that is beta. On y-axis, we take the dependent factor that is return. When beta is 0, you require the return equal to RF. As and when the beta increases, so the required rate of return also increases. So we can say that so there is a kind of linear relationship over here that we have. So this is what so we understand. Uh, this is what so the kind of diagram that we have. 